Hello, my name is Paulo Seleguim, and I'm a professor here at the University of Sao Paulo in Brazil. I'm recording this video to introduce you to my new book titled Fundamentals of Aerospace Engineering. It's available on Amazon in both Kindle and paperback versions, and you can get it in two languages, English and Portuguese. The book covers a mix of subjects that I've been teaching for now the past 36 years, mainly for the aeronautical, mechanical, and mechatronics engineering courses. There are six chapters elaborately illustrated. I really put a lot of effort in those illustrations, uh, covering a range of topics from the history of space exploration and rocket design in their operation to the fundamentals of orbital mechanics. I try to write the book in a conversational tone, hoping to make it, let's say, accessible and engaging. Although English, as I'm sure you notice, is not my native language, I really hope I have at least partially succeeded in this effort. And to give you a sense of this, let me share the opening paragraphs of Chapter 2, Routes to the Cosmos or Breaking Free from Earth's Gravitational Shackles. The great voyages of the 14th century were only possible thanks to the development of Portuguese caravels capable of crossing oceans and sustaining the lives of their crews during the journey. Similarly, to explore space, we must develop spacecrafts capable of traveling interplanetary distances and protecting us from the extreme conditions of the cosmos. The technical challenges that arise are equally extreme, but not insurmountable. A conventional electronic circuit, such as a computer, would cease to function in temperatures near absolute zero or under the constant bombardment of ionized particles from the sun, the solar wind. A spacecraft must, therefore, maintain habitable conditions for its crew, human or robotic, much like a caravel could shelter its sailors from harsh weather. While the analogy between oceanic and space exploration effectively illustrates the difficulties involved, it does not fully capture what in engineering terms we refer to as a contact resistance problem. To elaborate, a Portuguese navigator in the 1400s faced no major obstacle in leaving the coast to sail into the open sea, whereas to reach interplanetary space, one must first overcome Earth's gravitational pull. To address the inadequacy of this aspect of my analogy, it is as if a strong wind was blowing from the sea toward the coast, significantly hindering the caravel's departure. For a spacecraft, the solution lies in the launch vehicle, rocket, or booster. For the Portuguese ship, continuing the analogy, it is as if it were pushed to sea by a tugboat, as indeed occurred during the early Industrial Revolution. In any case, Easily overcoming this opposing force to achieve launch remains an open challenge due to the technological and economic constraints that proposed solutions must meet. One of the first to approach the question of space launch scientifically was Tsiolkovsky. However, before him, fiction authors exercised their creativity by imagining stories built around various propositions. For example, H. U. Wells in his the first man in the moon, 1901, describes a spherical spacecraft equipped with sliding panels made of caverit, a material opaque to gravity, capable of inverting gravitational attraction and thus generating the propulsive force needed for launch. Wells had already explored a less fanciful alternative in other works. Launching objects into space using super cannons, as described by Newton in 1728 in the third book of his Principia Mathematica. Perhaps the most detailed fictional work of the time involving space cannons is the book From the Earth to the Moon, published in 1865 by Jules Verne. The story is set in the post-Civil War United States and tells of the Baltimore Gun Club project, aimed at launching a projectile carrying three people to the moon via a massive cannon cast directly into Florida's rocky ground near Tampa. Verne's narrative is rooted in physical principles and the technical challenges of the project, such as the projectile's initial velocity, the cannon's location and dimensions, and the exact position of the moon at the moment of firing. Both books are fascinating, but the question here is this. Is it possible to launch an object into space using a super cannon, 
Or is the idea as fantastical as Wells's cave panels? The answer is both yes and no. Let's explore why. And so the story goes, the chapter continues describing the physics of the space cannon, Tsiolkovsky space tower, the space elevator, and also the space plane, which, as you know, are, in theory at least, capable of reaching orbit and returning to the Earth without staging, that is, in one single piece. Well, that's it for now. I hope this book motivates you as much as I enjoyed its creation process. Thank you.